Okay, hi guys. Uh, it's uh, Monday the 30th uh, of October. Uh, my students wrote the paper to AS level structured questions on Friday uh, uh, about uh, three four days ago. And I've just been given the uh, paper that the students wrote on Friday. Um, I'll just have a look at it myself. Okay, so I thought I'd make a little like reactions video. Uh, I've not seen the paper yet, so uh, let's have a look. So October, November 2017, and this was the 2-2. Okay, it was an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so starting off, got all the normal uh, formulas and data. So the first question, okay, uh, answer all the questions in the spaces provided. One end of a wire is connected to a fixed point. A load is attached to the other so the wire hangs vertically. Okay, so that has to name uh, an instrument to measure the diameter of the wire. So you're obviously going to say micrometer. How random errors may be reduced when using the instrument. Now it's worth two marks. So they're going to say measure, I guess, random errors. You're going to measure maybe down the, the wire and maybe even the helix as well. Okay, then it's got a question about the stress, and you're just going to put the, the values in, and then determine the percentage uncertainty, okay, and then you've got the values there, so it's really quite nice. Uh, and then the absolute uncertainty as well, okay, fine. Okay, next question, this is to find the moment of a force, so that's quite nice, just a basic definition. Okay, then we've got some kind of like a wheel, oh, okay, it's a thin disc. Thin disc of radius R is supported by the center of a pin. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's going to be some kind of torque of a couple, and then you have got a uh, a force adding in the opposite direction. State and express in terms of R the torque of the couple due to the force A and B adding on the disc. Well, 1.2 times 2R. Okay, that, that's not that bad. Friction between the disc and the pin is negligible. Determine the angle theta. State the magnitude of the force on the pin uh, on the disc. Well, it's not just going to be 6 because the other two are going to cancel each other out. Okay. And it's not the easiest question, but it's not so bad. Okay, uh, the, the number three. Now, th this is what the students were talking about, that there was uh, springs going into water or something. A spring is attached at one end, so it's uh, to a fixed point, and hangs vertically uh, with a cube attached to the other end. The cube is initially held so that the spring is a, uh, has zero extension. Calculate the difference in pressure exerted by the water on the top and bottom so, uh, on the top and bottom face of the cube. So pressure equals rho g h. It's nice, not a hard question. And then use your answer to show that the up thrust is one point three. Okay, so you've worked out what the pressure is at the bottom. Okay, and then that times by the the area. That will give you the uh, pressure equals yeah, pressure times the area equals the force. Yeah, that's it. Calculate the force exists on the spring by the cube when it's in equilibrium in the water. Okay. Okay, so all you need to do is you've got the, the weight going down minus the up thrust, which is very nice. 2.7, I guess. Uh, it says determine the initial height above the water surface of the base of the cube before it was released. Uh, 
That's a tough question. How are you going to do that? Determine the initial height above the surface of the water before it was released. It's seven centimetres in. Oh, it's gone in seven centimetres and it's applying a force of 2.7. Can you use that? I think that's how you're going to do it. The cube in the water is released from the spring. Determine the initial acceleration of the cube. That just, isn't that just going to be 9.81? The very, very... Oh, it's, it's released in the water. Ah, okay. Okay, the conditions to form a stationary wave. That's nice. And it's got a stationary wave here. A horizontal string is stretched between two fixed points, X and Y. State the number of antinodes in the stationary wave. One, two, three, four, five. Determine the minimum time taken for particle P to travel from the lowest point to the highest point. Okay, so if it's going 40 hertz, then you use that, time, that T equals 1 over 40. That will tell you the total time it takes for one whole cycle, and then half of that. State the phase difference for this unit between the vibrations of particle P and Q. Okay, so it's not 180, it's not 90, it's halfway between. Determine the speed of the progressive wave along the string. So you know the distance between X and Y is two meters. So that's one, two and a half waves. Yeah, so with that you can work out the wavelength. You know the frequency, and then V equals F times lambda, so pretty nice. Uh, define the Coulomb. Okay, and then the, the next question I'm looking at is the... Uh, um, Metal plates, and there's a potential between them. And then there's a smoke particle in the middle. It's got a weight and it's got a charge. Show that the electric force acting on the particle is 4 times 10 to the minus 15. Okay, well that's nice. Draw labelled arrows to show the direction of the two forces acting on the smoke particle. Okay, so the force of weight going down, and then the charge is going to go that way work out the resultant force. Okay, so then you're just going to use Pythagoras to work out the magnitude and then the angle, uh, you can just use 10. The electric field in B is switched on at time t when the particle is at a horizontal displacement of 2 centimeters from the left plate. At time t equals 0, the horizontal velocity of the particle is 0. The particle is then moved by the electric field until it hits the plate at time t. This gets the variation with time with the horizontal displacement s of the particle from the left hand plate. So when time equals zero, the horizontal velocity of the particle is zero. It's moved by the electric field until it hits the plate at t, t equals t. Okay. Let's get to the variation with time t for the horizontal displacement of the particle from the left hand plate. Okay, so it's going to go from 2 to 0, and it's, it's going to be a projectile. 
So it was meant by an electric current, uh, a flow of charge carriers, or the rate of flow of charge. I think you, the syllabus kind of hints they they want the rate of flow, the rate of charge carriers. Or a flow of charge carriers. That's what they want. They want a flow of charge carriers or the rate of flow of charge. I think I'll just write both. Metal wire has length L and cross sectional area A. State in terms of A, E, L, and N the expression for the total charge of free electrons in the wire. Well, that's nice. Use your answer in I to show that the current I is given by the equation I equals NAVE. So it's going to be the total... So state in terms of A, E, L and N, the total charge of the free electrons in the wire. So the total ele free electrons is just going to be A times L times N times E. Easy. Okay, now this is, some of the students were telling me about this, where there was a wire, and then uh, the resistivity is not changed, but like there's a damaged area, and the cross-sectional area has changed. So the diameter has been reduced to 0 0.6, about well, basically 69% of the original diameter. Okay, the current in the wire is 0 0.5 amps. And it says determine the ratio of the drift speed of the free electrons in the cross section area Y to the drift speed of the electrons in the cross section area X. Now this is actually not that bad because it's basically going to be the you've got the area, okay? Oh no, you don't have the area, but you can work out the area. Okay, it's basically proportional to the diameter squared. Okay, so the ratio is going to be The average drift speed of the, uh, in Y, okay, so that will be 0 0.69 squared over 1 squared. That's not that bad. I, th I, th I think students will find that tricky. Okay, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad a question. The main part of the wire with the cross-sectional area X has a resistance per unit length. Okay. I get the resistance being at length. Okay. The power dissipated. Okay, that's fine. You know the current. Yeah. We're told it's 0 0.5 amps. And then this is P equals I squared R. Uh, the diameter of the damaged wire is further decreased. Assuming that the current remains constant. State and explain qualitatively the change, if any, to the power dissipated in the damage length of the wire. Well, the power is going to increase. The reason why uh, is the diameter is going to get smaller. Okay, the current's going to remain the same, but the speed of the electrons has got to increase uh, because the area uh, of the actual pipe itself has decreased. Therefore, the electrons have got more energy. Uh, when they bump into an atom, they're going to release more heat. Okay. The last question, it's always a nuclear question. Uh, a stationary nucleus X decays and mixed by beta plus. A couple of my students said they didn't notice the beta plus. I was like, oh. Okay. State the name of the class group of the particles that include beta plus. Leptons. Okay. For the nucleus X, state the proton number and the neutron number. I mean, please, that's, that's GCSE. Okay, then the carbon-12 nucleus has a mass of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Its kinetic energy uh, is 0 0.8 mega electron volts. Calculate the speed of the nucleus. So, okay, so the energy is in mega electron volts, but you just convert it to joules, and then you use uh, half mv squared, okay, which is quite nice. Explain why the sum of the kinetic energies of a carbon-12 nucleus and the beta-plus particles cannot equal the total energy releasing the decay because there's also an uh, electron neutrino released. 
Okay, so hopefully, I don't know. I have to say, I think it was harder than last year, but I thought last year's paper was possibly, as a teacher, a bit too easy. Uh, this is definitely uh, a harder, a harder uh, test. Okay, but uh, no, I kind of quite like it. It's quite good. Okay, guys. Uh, bye for now.